Today we have a story that could almost be ripped from today's headlines about two political opponents whose hatred for each other ends up in a confrontation on the streets of downtown Knoxville, Tennessee. Now, who are we talking about? Well, keep watching and you'll find out. Hello, folks. I'm Steve Gilley, along with Rod Mullins, and this is Stories, A History of Appalachia. And, well, I just really told you a fib. Rod really isn't here this evening. He's got some personal business that, that he has to attend to, taking care of a relative, so he's not able to be here this evening. But we did manage to get together a few days ago to record the audio version of this podcast for our uh, Stories, A History of Appalachia podcast. Fortunately, we ran some video that day, so we're going to combine that with this opening and a new closing to bring you this week's story. And that also explains why the color of my shirt is a little bit different. Anyway, before we get started, as always, be sure to go down below, click the subscribe button if you haven't already, ding the bell to get notified of every new story we put out, and be sure to give us one of these if you don't mind, okay? Well, I'm not going to say anything, Steve, to give this away, but I'm telling you, these two guys hated each other with a passion, a passion to just about, I guess they could have murdered each other before it was over with, and they really wouldn't have cared which one died as long as the other died first before they did, I guess, if you want to say that. I got a hint for you. They tried to do that. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> it's like, you know, I just picture this as both of them lying on the ground saying, when are you going to die? Well, you die first, and then I'll die. As well. <laughs> and, you know, that's kind of based on another Appalachian story we've talked about before. But oh, yeah. This happens to be with two personalities very larger than life. Oh, yes, indeed. Two very big, huge figures in history in Tennessee. Now, one of these fellows was a man whose nickname was Nola Chucky Jack, although most folks have never heard him called that. The others was Old Hickory, which you probably have heard. Now, John Sevier, or Old Nola Chucky Jack, was the first and only governor of the state of Franklin, an Indian fighter and soldier, and the first governor of the state of Tennessee. Andrew Jackson, Old Hickory, had been a frontier lawyer in Jonesboro, a Tennessee Superior Court judge in Knoxville, head of the Tennessee militia, hero of the War of 1812, and president of the United States. And the two men were bitter political rivals. In 1796, shortly after Tennessee became a state, Jackson made himself a candidate for the major general of the state militia. Governor Sevier, though, had other notions on who that person should be, a man named George Conway. Well, pulling some strings, Sevier managed to secure that position for Conway, much to Jackson's anger. To make matters worse, Sevier dismissed the future president as a nobody, a, quote, poor, pitiful, petty, fogging lawyer, end quote. Gosh, I like that. I like that right there. Poor, pitiful, petty. Okay. An insult designed to trigger the notoriously thin-skinned Jackson who swore he'd get even. You know, swearing back then was interesting. Mm -hmm. Poor, pitiful, petty-fogging lawyer probably was um, obscene. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but, you know, it, yeah. it sounds that way in, in some ways. You, you're, you think you're leaning toward that, but, you know, I don't know. <laughs> well, Sevier served his term as governor, succeeded by Archibald Roan. And during Roan's term, that same position in the militia opened up, and Sevier himself sought appointment for it. Roan, though, appointed... Um, now, you guessed it, Andrew Jackson to serve. <laughs> so Severe, quite bent out of shape, decided to run for another term as governor to get even for not being appointed, which he won, and he returned to his former office. At this time, in addition to his position with the state militia, Andrew Jackson was now a judge sitting in the Superior Court of Appeals, which was located in Knoxville, handling local cases plus appeals from other courts in the East Tennessee area. The court was located in the Knox County Courthouse on the spot in Knoxville where the old Knox County Courthouse still stands today. And at that time, too, Rod, Knoxville was the capital of Tennessee. Yeah, I remember that now. It's 
it's kind of hard to believe, but yeah, at one time, Knoxville was at least the center of attention, at least for the state of Tennessee. By the way, I have a little bit of trivia for you. Okay. There were three capitals of the state of Tennessee. Can you name them? Well, Knoxville was one of them. Mm-hmm. Nashville was the second one. Right. Was Jackson the third? No. Uh -uh. Okay, I missed it then. Kingston. Kingston. Okay. I get now, you. Do you I know how you. that happened to come about? No, I don't. Okay. Seems that the folks in the state government wanted to annex some more land from the Cherokee. Okay. And so in return for allowing the annexation, they Cherokee wanted the capital of Tennessee to be uh, at what's called the Southwest Point, which at that point was the farthest southwest that white settlement existed, which mm -hmm. would be Kingston. So the government of Tennessee said, yes, we'll do that. So they showed up and made uh, Kingston the capital for one day. Then they moved it to Nashville. Wow. Talk about dirty. <laughs> That's dirty. That's really yeah. dirty. <laughs> it is indeed. Well, <sighs> during that election, Judge Jackson got even for the slight handed to him by Severe by campaigning against him, accusing him of being a fraud and a crook. How? Well, Jackson accused Nolichucky Jack of conspiring to destroy land records and replacing them with forged documents in a massive fraud and bribery scheme that was designed to make him a wealthy landowner of stolen land. That sounds like something from today. Well, I said what? earlier, that's exactly what it was kind of like. Yeah. I know, but you caught me off guard on that one. I wasn't expecting <laughs> that. I didn't think it was that complicated. But, man, they did things big back in those days. Wow. Well, even though he won, Severe was deeply offended, and he was hurt by Jackson's accusations. I don't know if he was really that hurt. He was probably bully mad at Jackson for all this. And their feud came to a boil. Hmm, did I just mention that? Their feud came to a boil on October 1st, 1803. That morning, Jackson was headed into the courthouse in Knoxville for his day's docket. At the same time, John Severe was entering the courthouse on business. The two men met on the courthouse steps. They began to argue louder and louder until Severe challenged Jackson to draw his weapon and fight. On this day, though, Andrew Jackson only had his cane while Severe had his sword, so he declined. Huh, did this stop the arguing? Of course not. It didn't stop the arguing, <laughs> did it, Steve? No. Back and forth the two men went. Then John Severe touched that third rail, as they say. Mm. Severe accused Jackson of having little military experience and shouldn't have been appointed major general of the Tennessee militia. Jackson defended his service to the militia using that word service. Mm. John Severe then told Jackson, Service? I know of no great service you rendered for the country except taking a trip to Natchez with another man's wife. Ooh. <laughs> you see, Rachel Jackson had been married to another man, but thought he had divorced her when she married Andrew Jackson, and so did Jackson. It was later discovered that she was still married to her first husband, and a divorce was hastily arranged, and she married Old Hickory a second time. But Jackson was dogged with accusations of being an adulterer for the rest of his life, a true sore spot for a man who prided himself on being honorable, and an accusation that was well known to set him off. And, Rod, it did that October day. Yes, it did, Steve, because at first... Jackson said nothing. The silence in the air was almost unbearable. You know, it was so thick you could cut it with a knife, okay? Then he responded, Great God! Do you mention her sacred name? Oh, <laughs> I kind of like that. He then physically attacked Severe, and the two men got into a fist fight in front of the courthouse. Soon they were separated by the onlookers. But he wasn't over with yet. The next day, Jackson sent a letter to the governor, challenging him to a duel. Severe wrote back in a mocking tone, saying that he would, 
Wait on you with pleasure at any time and place not within the state of Tennessee, attended by my friends with pistols, presuming you know nothing about the use of any other arms, Georgia, Virginia, and North Carolina are all within our vicinity. Jackson responded, agreeing to meet Governor Sevier that day at a place known as the Southwest Point, which is the southwesternmost point of settlement beyond which was Cherokee lands, pursuant to William Blunt's treaty of the Holston negotiated with the Cherokee. At the Southwest Point was Fort Southwest Point, a military fort manned at that time for protection against Cherokee raids against Knoxville. All of this is at the confluence of the Clinch River and the Tennessee River, where the Clinch River now flows into Watts Bar Lake in Kingston today. Well, that fight didn't happen that day, and the two men sent letters back and forth. And one, a suggestion to duel at Cumberland Gap was made, but never came to pass. Jackson was getting tired of all the talk, though, referring to Severe in one of his letters as a, <clears throat> get ready, Rod, a coward and poltroon. A poltroon? I've never yeah. heard of a poltroon before. Well, a poltroon. <laughs> is that a pontoon? <laughs> no, a poltroon is defined as an utter coward. Okay. No yeah, mistaking right. how Jackson felt about his political rival. And uh, that would have been that, but for, and I love the but fours, an unfortunate encounter. Hmm. On October 16th, 1803, the governor was on his way to a conference with the Cherokee in Indian Territory on the other side of the Clinch River. Near the southwest point, Jackson and his party met Severe as they were headed west. Jackson sent a note to Severe by one of his men. He didn't he didn't feel like shouting at him, so he just sent a note. But Severe refused to accept it. What happened next depends on which side's version you believe. According to Jackson's men, Severe then dismounted his horse and drew a pistol. Jackson did the same and began firing at the governor, prompting Severe to dash behind a tree to hide, refusing to come out. This witness said that he finally prevailed on Jackson to stop shooting. I can hear it screaming now. Stop shooting, you imbecile! No, I'm just kidding. Since Severe refused to defend himself and then Jackson's party left, leaving Severe behind, cowering behind that tree. Well, we have the other side. Governor Severe's okay. side. And that side said that Jackson was lightly armed and had his cane with him. Holding out his cane like a lance... He and his horse charged at Severe most furiously. At that, <laughs> yeah, I see you laughing there. At that, Severe <laughs> dismounted his horse to meet Jackson's charge. But the judge was stopped by his men who calmed him down and induced him to give his hand to the governor. The men went their separate ways, and although their dislike for each other continued, the duel was over. Now, I, I don't know. I just see knights in shining armor without the armor, and a cane. That's, that's kind of what I see there. I see Don Quixote is what I see here. <laughs> Don Quixote Jackson, not old hickory here. But gosh. Oh, my gosh. So, uh, yeah, what do you think about that? No, uh, I have never heard this before. I knew that we've talked about it. Governor Sevier and mm -hmm. Andrew Jackson had this extreme hate for each other. They disliked each other. They disliked the ground each other walked on. But I had no idea that it went to this far of a confrontation. Well, Andrew and, Jackson had uh, a hot temper, a really hot temper. Oh, yeah, temper. I know. Got him into trouble so many times, so many duels. I think this was his second duel, uh, mm -hmm. first one being in Jonesboro with another attorney, but that's a different story we told about earlier. Right. Um, I, you know, I, I just, I find it hard to think that you're there in the state capitol having a fist fight between a Supreme Court justice and the governor of mm -hmm. the state in downtown Knoxville. Yeah. Well, you know, it's kind of amazing. We, we sit here and are amazed by this. And, you know, we would probably say, that's terrible. But then... We watch this stuff on television of uh, happening in another country, say sometimes in Europe, they'll go and they'll jump the pews or whatever there inside the government uh, 
meeting area and they will start attacking each other. They will mm-hmm. be, it's happened in Japan, I think, if I'm not mistaken. But you think that these guys are a little bit more calm, reserve about this. But like you said, Andrew Jackson, everything I ever read about Andrew Jackson, he was hot tempered. He was volatile. He mm-hmm. was so bad. Shake him just a tad bit and nitroglycerin explosion is what you'd have. Yeah, indeed. Uh, it's just, um, well, I think that's one thing we still haven't had here. A governor to Supreme mm-hmm. Court justice in the state having a knock down drag out on the street, but, um, Nothing would surprise me. <laughs> well, nothing would point. surprise me these days, too. So, uh, Oh, one other thing before we finish up this podcast. John Sevier yeah. ended up going out and becoming a surveyor. It, this is in the long run. He served, in, I think, in the Congress and, and, and all that afterwards. But he ended up being a surveyor down in Alabama, which is where he passed away. Mm-hmm. He was buried down there. I think it was in the early 1920s, he, his body was returned to Knoxville, and he is buried at the old Knox County Courthouse with a very nice, huge obelisk right there at his gravesite. And his wife is also buried there next to him. Well, you know, and another thing that really grabbed my attention, you said these two tried to agree to have a duel mm-hmm. at Cumberland Gap. Yes, Anywhere that they could go outside the state of Tennessee because dueling was illegal inside Tennessee. Why couldn't they have just played a game and got on the other side of the rail and tried to pretend not to fall off? Hey, look at me. Let's see who's going to fall first. You know, I just, I just, oh my gosh. I mean, I just can't believe these two were the way they were. But then again, you know, it was the times I'm sure that when you felt like, as a gentleman, you felt like you were violated against in a certain way. You stand up for your rights and you'd fight is what you would do. And that, folks, is the story of the duel between Andrew Jackson and John Severe. Another bit of the history of this place we call home, Appalachia. Thanks for listening. Now, you can subscribe to the audio version of the podcast in many ways at Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Audible, or on your favorite podcast app. And if you haven't subscribed to us here on YouTube, be sure, as I said before, to go down below, click the subscribe button, and be sure to ding the bell to get updates whenever we put out a new story. Until next we meet, y'all take care. So long, everybody. <laughs>